Birds have several adaptions, enabling them to fly. A key one of these, of course, is the wings, both in the shape of the wings, and also the ability to move them in the right direction with enough power to combat the force of gravity. However, there's another way to combat the force of gravity. That's by making yourself lighter than would normally be the case. In order to do this, some bird bones have a distinct and unusual structure. Bones, of course, are used in most higher animals to support the tendons and muscles, as well as for protection of vulnerable organs like the hearts and lungs. Whilst some of that protection can be made lighter due to the bird's ability to fly away from a dangerous situation, some of the major bones actually need to be stronger than land animals due to the stresses that flying actually puts on them. What form did these strong yet light bones take during evolution? A specific term for the structure of bird bones is pneumatic bones, as in pneumatic tyres. I call this the same reason tyres are, that they're hollow and they're filled with air. Of course, if you hollow out a bone and fill it with air, it can be dramatically lighter than a normal bone. It's also going to be substantially weaker as a result. The key to keeping a great deal of the strength of the bone is by creating patterns of triangular cross struts with across the interior of the bone structure. This triangular structure is extremely strong and engineers use it all the time. Many structures they need to combine lightweight with strength, most notably in bridge design. The middle section of the bones in birds have, have very few of these crossbeam support structures and a thicker cortex or outer bone covering, whereas the ends which are joined to other bones have a great many trabecular or these cross structures creating a honeycomb-like structure at both ends of the bones. They have a thinner cortex around the outside. Now the bone structure goes a little bit further than that, in that the bones are actually not sealed off from the rest of the bird. Instead, their respiratory system actually connects with the air spaces within the bones. It enables birds to have a greater quantity of air circulating around their bodies than their lung capacity would normally allow, even able to extract oxygen from the air was actually exhaling. Now, not all birds have the same proportion of pneumatic bones in their bodies as others. Birds that dive into the water at high speed need far stronger bones able to withstand the impact. As a result, they have less pneumatic bones. Additionally, some water owl and flightless birds have no pneumatic bones at all. However, in general, the better a bird flies, the greater proportion of pneumatic bones is likely to have. And pneumatic bones However, not purely isolated to birds. Even humans have some pneumatic bones in the skull, which helps them make the skull lighter, also helps with resonance of the voice. But going back 80 million years with dinosaurs like Aerostion, which literally means air bones, also had pneumatic bones, probably enabling them to move significantly faster than the dinosaurs which hunted for food. This dinosaur, or others like it, they have passed down the genes from pneumatic bones to birds, enabling them to take to the skies.